Thanks for coming. Uh, very kind of you. And uh, so this is kind of leading on from where we were last uh, last week. Last week we chatted a lot about um, how to build some successful online communities, and that's very good. But in South Africa we have over 100% internet, or sorry, mobile penetration. So, um, that's not really by the way. And uh, Nick uh, has started one of the most successful sort of mobile startups this year or last year, and uh, they build a um, mobile community. So he's here just going to talk a little bit about the space, um, what he's been doing, and maybe some fun things we can do together. Anyway, cheers. Cool. Yeah. Um, so I have spoken here before for you, mates, um, and that was fun. So today I've decided to not talk techie stuff and talk more theoretical since I'm talking to an agency. Um, so I read a really, really interesting, brilliant um, presentation yesterday from a guy in Scotland who is European, who's never been to Africa. And everything he said in this presentation was exactly the way that everyone should be thinking. So it got me thinking about mobile first and what exactly mobile first means and being in South Africa, how important that is. So before I go on, and since there is a camera here, um, I, I have to say stuff like this. Um, I am very dogmatic. I'm not always right. I'm very, I give very extreme scenarios. So I'm going to say things like, it's pointless having a website. It's not pointless having a website, but that's very fair, right? Um, <laughs> I provide hyperbolic truths um, to prove a point. So I will say that there is no point in having a PC in this country. That's not really true, we all know that, but it kind of comes. Um, and the other thing you need to know, in spite of me giving hyperbolic truths, my facts are correct. So if I tell you that um, the iPhone stats are the iPhone stats, those are the iPhone stats. Um, and there's a reason I say that. So, who is mobile? This is a very important question. Um, your clients, I'm sure, aren't giving you the biggest digital budgets and not giving you big mobile budgets at all. So the things you need to ask and the things you need to know are who, who is your target market? For example, I found out that you've got that label as a client. Those guys don't have iPhones. Guys drinking that label do not have iPhones. Forget what your market research says. Maybe 10 out of the 100 people you interviewed did have iPhones. Those 10 of the aspirational guys who would rather buy eight times than bread. When I was at the Grid Photocom, that is what we found in our market research. There are a certain group of people who can't afford bread. When they have money, they would rather buy eight times than bread. Okay, so that is a real user that you're experiencing in South Africa on mobile. So you have to consider things like campaign-specific answers. You all know this, but I'm reiterating it because when it comes to mobile, for some reason, the knowledge goes out to you. So it has to be client-specific. One iPhone app does not fit all clients. It just doesn't work that way. Product specific. If you're selling an Audi and if you're selling a black label, there are different campaigns and different solutions on mobile. It might be the same thing on web, it's not on mobile. They're different handsets, different demographics, different phones, different experiences, different browsers. There is a lot of shit to consider here. So you have to be very specific about what you're thinking of. Do they have lots of money and not the clients, the end user? Because that's important. The clients, all your clients have money, you get that. Um, do they have no money? Because there's also a, market, a way to target that market. If they have no money, they've probably got a 200 grand phone, which can do the internet, but can only do mobile web. And on a WAP phone, that means that it's white background, blue text with links. That's what you're targeting. So these are some things to consider. One size does not fit all, but mobile does. There is a solution for everyone on mobile. So South Africa is a mobile first market. I know that that sounds really obvious to think about, but no one ever thinks about it that way. Everyone in this country, and us excluded in this room because we actually have a job, everyone else in this country experiences anything to do with information that's digital on their phone first. Um, some random stats that I, I keep in my vault, but there are roughly 2 million people on Facebook in South Africa. If you consider that we have 100% mobile penetration, it's more like 98, 99. And you consider that only probably maybe 5% of our country have desktop PCs and access to the internet via a desktop PC. The stats indicate that probably one and a half million people are using Facebook who have never seen a PC. So the campaigns you're putting on Facebook, who are they targeting? Just, that's really important to consider that most people that are targeting Facebook and using Facebook in this country are looking at it on a mobile phone and probably on a mobile website, not on an app. So that's something really important to consider that, you know, it's a mobile first market. So your Facebook campaigns, you're targeting them to desktop web, but that might not be right. Um, what are your budgets? Who is preaching mobile? And these are some really important questions that I thought I'd throw out and get you guys to consider because if I'm not convincing you to get bigger budgets, then I'm doing the wrong job. So your open mobile budgets versus your desktop budget, that's internal. I can guarantee you desktop outweighs mobile. Client mobile budgets versus client desktop budgets. Guarantee you that desktop budgets are bigger. That makes zero sense to me. When there are 48 million people in this country, 
3 million or maybe 4 million have broadband, if we're lucky. 28 million have access to cell phone internet. 9 to 11 million are actually using internet on their cell phones. Why on earth do you have big desktop budgets? What's the bloody point? It doesn't make sense to me. Mobile is where your budgets need to be. Even if it's a dumbed down product, the end result is better. So mobile resources versus desktop resources internally also need to be increased. So then pushing on to what is mobile, um, this is a very hotly debated topic right now um, in my company and globally. Um, and please feel free to bug them and tell me that I'm at any point in this conversation. Um, personally, I would not consider any of these mobile. Um, the reason I've got the little MacBook Air here is because when Steve Jobs was presenting it, he was holding it like this with five fingers. So you're telling me if you consider an iPad mobile, you don't consider a MacBook Air mobile. If I can hold a desktop PC like that, it's mobile. So that's the American definition of mobile. Sorry, but it's true. That's the Western world's definition. If you have an iPad and you think it's mobile, you're living in a dream world. That is not mobile. Um, I don't know if any of you have been following the massive developments happening with Nokia and Microsoft in the last three days, but if you haven't, you need to go and research them. Nokia and Microsoft have just partnered up. Nokia is dropping their operating system, and they're going to Windows. And that's a very, very huge thing, because Nokia controls over 60% of the global markets of mobile phones. Over 60%. That's huge. So that's very big. You look at that. These are the screen sizes and the different things that you're looking at. What isn't mobile, actually? Maybe that's what we should be saying, is if the iPad's mobile, then maybe so is the desktop. And this presentation I watched yesterday said really interestingly, 20 years ago, the desktop PC, the big box and the big screen, that was considered a mobile computer. Because prior to that, computers filled this room. That's how big computers were. So a desktop PC that you could actually pick up, that was mobile because you could pick it up. So the level of mobile is just being pushed further and further and further away. And I mean, for, for us, we're looking at this market here, 128 by 160, just think about how small that is. That's the majority of our country. That's a lot of people using a lot of those phones. So let's push on and talk iPhone. And actually, let's forget about the iPhone, because it's a load of crap. It is, I'm sorry, it's dictatorial. I'm a big fan, I'm an Apple fanboy, as you can see. But these are the truths. 6% of the US market share is iPhone. That's it, 6%. And if you want to be very specific, smartphone penetration is only 31% of the population. That means that there is another 69% of the population who don't have smartphones in a Western country, in a first world country. So 31% of what, 100 million? Like, are you kidding me? There's 60 million people who aren't being catered for in the American market by the American agencies, purely because they don't have an iPhone or a smartphone. That's the stupid, the dumbest business practice I've ever seen. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. You'd rather sweep up the bottom when no one else is playing. And that same mentality is happening here in this country. 4% of the global market share, oh, you can't see that unfortunately, so that says 4% of the global market share, um, and don't get me wrong, eh? like this is, it's an enormous impact that this phone has had on the mobile market, it's a revolutionized thing, I'm not disputing that, it's beautiful, the apps are amazing, it caters for all of our needs, but it has no overall penetration, so what's the point actually, like, what are we doing this for? And another one that you probably won't be able to see, but the truth about the African penetration, 1% of our market. The iPhone is 1% or less of the African market. Nokia, 69% of the African market. If you're building anything on mobile, build it on mobile, wait for Symbian. That's the answer. If you want to be big outside of South Africa, in any country outside of South Africa, or South Africa, obviously, I can South Africa, build it on Nokia. That's it. The biggest handset in the, in, in the whole continent right now is the Nokia Express Music. That phone went defunct like two months ago, three months ago. Like, it's still the biggest handset. Followed to that is Samsung E250. We just customized our entire website for the Samsung E250. Do any of you even know what a Samsung E250 looks like? That little flick up Samsung that we all had about five or six years ago. That is one of the biggest handsets in the country. We've had to strip down all of our logos, get rid of everything because it's a web enabled handset. So now we're catering probably about 2 million more people in South Africa because we have the Samsung E250 That's, that, that works. So, Forget the iPhone. If you want to be cool, you're wrong. If you want to win awards, you're wrong. If you like to follow trends, you're also wrong. And if you listen to your clients, you're definitely wrong. Because your clients will say to you, everyone's talking about an iPad, get an iPad app. Are you freaking mental? What is the point? You're going to cater to a thousand rich kids in the I'm sorry, but it's true. And I'm one of them. I'm, by the time I come back from the States next month, so I'm one of those rich kids, I'm going to have an Android phone and an Android tablet. I know I am, but I can afford it. 
you're not selling shit to me though. Because whatever you can sell to me, I'm buying already. So don't get me an iPad because whatever you can sell me, I'm buying already. Because I have an iPad. So it makes no sense to me. It really bugs me, the, the whole awards thing, and I preach about this all the time. Um, I was at Vodacom and we ran the grid. It was second to next the biggest mobile location-based social network in the country. 1.8 million users. And last year at the Lurie's, we got beaten out by Tetris. <laughs> You're kidding me. So agencies want to win awards. They don't want to win awards. <coughs> You know, yeah. it just it doesn't make sense to me. And the trends right now, in South Africa, the trends are saying go to market. Well, the numbers are disagreeing with that, and I can't say numbers over and over and over again. So at the end of the day, do what's right for your clients. And what's right for your clients is that. Nokia, Samsung, Motorola, HP, HTC, LG, Sony Ericsson, Dell, Apple, maybe, BlackBerry, definitely. In this market, BlackBerry is huge. In Africa, BlackBerry is huge. It's might not be as cool as Apple, but it has been here, which means one cent messaging, which means people love it in Africa, because it's one cent messaging. No SMSs. The biggest threat to mix it today is BlackBerry Messenger. Not any other social network is BlackBerry Messenger. Trust me when I say that, I know. So the quote is very simple. The most popular devices are not necessarily translating into the most used devices. And this is BMW is the most popular, and Don Matt says Ford is the most used. I wouldn't have guessed that. You know, you think of what's popular and you think, cool, oh, I'm going to use that one. But actually, if you want to sell a car, you want to sell forwards because they're the most used, they're the most bought. So the same thing applies to the mobile web. And I mean, you can have a look at what's going on here in, in the world map. There's not very many iPhones on that map. It's Nokia. Everywhere is Nokia. And I mean, it's, that's why for me, the Nokia and Microsoft announcements is really huge and something worth following. But the point is, Nokia has 60% of the market. Microsoft's slipping, Nokia's slipping because Apple and Android are winning. So what they did was partner. Well, hello, Goliath. They are going to now start dominating the markets, and the smartphones are going to start winning. With that said, however, it is very important to remember that Android is making it very viable to have very cheap feature phones. We've heard for the last year or two that Vodacom and Vodafone are bringing out a 300 rand smartphone. That's revolutionary stuff that happens. That means that your user experience for your clients and my user experience for the end user are going to be so close together that you'll be able to build the most awesome shit on mobile and have everyone use this. But the fact is that the trends say, and the research that we've done, people keep phones for a lot of different reasons. We all upgrade when our upgrades become available, but we're on contract, a lot of us. That means we can upgrade. We're not paying cash for our handsets. So a lot of people at the bottom end have hand-me-down phones, have phones that their mom bought them that for reasons of um, love, they keep the phones. We had one guy that we spoke to kept a phone for four years because his mom died, and the mom gave him the phone. He refuses to upgrade. It doesn't matter what it does. It does what he needs it to do. Phone and SMS. That's it. So it's very rare that you can see someone in the low end of the market upgrading purely because they can, because they can't. The Samsung E250 is a 350 rand phone. That's 10% of the average South African's monthly salary. That's ridiculous. Like, that phone is what everyone is buying. An 8,000 rand smartphone is almost three months set of an average South African salary. That's astounding. So targeting the iPhone, don't get me wrong, there is a time and a space for an iPhone app. If you're selling an Audi, build an iPhone app. That's the smart thing to do, because people who buy an iPhone, buying Audis, have iPhones and iPads. That is a smart move, I agree. But why not build a mobile website too? Why not show the people who are drinking the Heineken who can't afford it that they could probably have an Audi and not afford it too? You know, there's value for having both. <laughs> So I want to push forward and talk about website building. That's what that says at the top. So a very interesting perspective here is sitting in a mobile-first market, why is it that we build desktop websites and then do handset detection to find out if the person looking at it is looking at a mobile phone, when there's probably 10 to 1 mobile phone user to desktop user? Surely you should be building des uh, mobile websites and seeing if the person's on desktop. And if they are on desktop, then serve them the desktop websites but optimize for mobile first, and then optimize for desktop. Because if you don't do that, this is what you're building. You're building a keyhole browsing experience, so that when a person looks at it through their mobile phone, they're seeing that much of your websites, because you're probably not doing handset detection properly. It's a very simple thing to do, but chances are you're not doing it properly. Or you're building two or three different websites, two or three different mobile sites. I mean, we cater at the moment on MoTri for over 4,500 different phones. That's the sort of level of handset detection you need to be doing. Four and a half different phones, and we don't even care for all of them. We care for like a small fraction of them. So our websites, we don't have one. 
Our website is a client-facing business website. We don't have a user experience website. We just don't. Because it doesn't make sense to us. We're a mobile company. We have a downloading site, Motorhive.mobi. That's our main drive. And if someone who's on a desktop goes to Motorhive.mobi, we push them to .com. That's the smartest thing that we could possibly do because we don't give a crap about the people browsing on their desktop. Those people are using Facebook for LinkedIn for what they already. So my advice is, what you need to do is start pushing people to the mobile sites. I mean, I run one of the biggest blogs, or used to be one of the biggest blogs in Africa called SA Rocks. I've been blocked on that thing in five minutes because the users just keep tanking. I thought the other day, well, shit, I should scrap the whole thing and make mobile sites. That's exactly what I should do. When I was at the main Guardian, and I was the head of their mobile division there, we found that people on mobile would spend up to 10 times more time reading an article than people on desktop. And it's a very simple user experience reason. They can't multitask when they're reading websites. A lot of the people who browse websites through the mobile web can only open one app at a time. Even iPhones up until six months ago could only do one thing at a time. So you read the story from top to bottom, you've paid to get there, it's cost you four rands to open that website on your airtime. So you, the, not us, but other people think about the airtime, I don't, I don't think about airtime at all. Okay, so the picture's loaded, it cost me four rand, and I'm now gonna read the story top to bottom and get the good value out of it that I deserve because I paid to be here. So the person reads it from top to bottom. They're reading 3,000 word stories from top to bottom, it's been 20 minutes on the site because they couldn't multitask. Whereas on web, 15,000 different things going on. It's such a more full and holistic use experience on a mobile phone, and it's also much more personal. So if any of you are advising or trying to SMS people, please stop, please stop. And I can give you a very good reason why. When we were at the grid, we were SMSing up to 100,000 people a month. For every person who joined, we lost three. Because they go, I don't want this crap spam, delete, never log in again. That is the bare fact truth. We weren't even paying for SMSs, so we could send them a million at a time, like being vertical, you know? It was not worth our time. It was more damaging than anything else to our brand, so we stopped. So what we've now done is on mobile, through Motrime, you can talk to your users without SMSing them. You can email them. So our primary source of contact with our users is email. If they don't have an email address, we offer them one. So there are different ways to do mobile. It doesn't have to be conventional. And also, SMS is so expensive. 120 SMS, 100,000 people, all. it's kind of expensive. It doesn't make sense. Um, and also, people just don't know. So, global penetration um, of mobile, 4 billion. Between 3 and a half and 4 billion numbers vary. No one's really got very good stats. Internet users are 1.4 billion, television is 1.5. Collectively, mobile phones reach more people than any other medium combined. Another reason why, if you're not thinking about mobile, you've already lost. It's really, really simple. By 2013, more people will access the internet and their mobile phones than on PCs. In Africa, that stat is true right now. It's very true. Right now, in South Africa, 10 million people access the internet and their phones every month. Now, a lot of people disagree. Arthur Goldstein will disagree with us. We disagree with him. That's OK. Um, from when we were at Vodacom, that's the closest stat that we have, and that's the realistic stat. 10 million people accessing the internet and mobile phones in our country. So it's a very simple theory. Using the mobile web, if you don't have a mobile web presence yet, you're ignoring billions of users you didn't know you wanted to talk to. Very simple, very obvious. So quickly, the last three slides that I have, two or three slides, um, what Motrive is. So we're a platform that allows you to build a mobile website with social features. So we basically take Facebook and give it to your clients on mobile, optimized for over 5,000 assets. So you can have chats, photo uploads, video uploads, blogging. We've got 60,000 blogs on our platform in four months. Pretty, pretty impressive that we've given that many people a blog. You can customize the platform to look and feel like you want it to look and feel. You can get rid of our logos and branding if you'd like to. We have detailed analytics and market intelligence, which is very important, as you all know, and it's what I was preaching about the last time I was here. Um, mobile, there is no reason that an agency should ever say to anyone that there's no way to track their ship on mobile. That's a lie. That is a patent lie. Um, we track everything. Demographics, age, gender, location, how often they log in, how many photos they uploaded, commented on, rated, ranked. We, everything's in mind, everything. We even give people points if they refresh a page, if they upload a photo, if they see someone else's profile. We check everything and we rate and rank every single one of our users according to their activity lists. So we know who are the most active users in your campaign, my campaign, and globally. So there is no reason to tell anyone that you can't track anything. That's a big lie. Um, we also take development time away, constraints, and we optimize everything for you. So one of the last slides, this is the last slide I have actually. Um, you can't really see that. Um, this is 
an effort we launched in Nigeria. Nigeria is the makeup for mobile. If you have a client in Nigeria and you want to do anything mobile, you can call. We launched a Guinness VIP campaign. Um, it is, in our knowledge, one of the biggest mobile campaigns in Africa that has ever been run. Guinness is one of the smartest mobile brands that I've ever seen. They've committed more on their mobile budget than their digital budget for this campaign. Um, and don't get us wrong, we landed our asses in the butter when it came to Nigeria and Guinness. Um, the numbers are ridiculous. Guinness sell more Guinnesses in Nigeria than anywhere else in the world. So it is a very easy brand for us to like, and a very easy brand to succeed with. Um, we are doing online reputation management at the moment through our chat rooms, and we have pretty much struggled to find anything negative about this brand. People love Guinness in Nigeria. So it's a great case study for us. The numbers are something similar, and I can't give you exact numbers, but roughly 250,000 users in two months have joined this platform. Of those, we get an 83% opt-in rate. 83% of the users who join the platform opt-in to allow Guinness to SMS, email, or phone them. 83%. That is ridiculous. These people love Guinness. They also, <laughs> have, they also have no other way of getting into Guinness. They don't have desktop way. This is the only way for them to get information. Now, what Guinness said that was really smart. The only time you'll see Guinness is at the very, very top, which you can't see, the logo. And in the chat rooms, you've got a little Guinness icon that you can send to people. So you can send them a Guinness in the chat rooms. Everything else is to do about football. The English Premier League is the biggest sport in Nigeria. Forget the Eagles, it's the English Premier League. Followed by La Liga, Champions League, and the FA Cup. What Guinness does is give these guys live feeds, so up to the minute scores and results of all of the games, every single game that's being played, news about the people that are in the games, pictures, um, and chat rooms for the top teams. Now, how we figured out what the top teams are, we've got a Guinness VIP fan in there, and then we've got Manchester, Chelsea, Arsenal, and Liverpool. We ran a poll. Our polls, on average, in a day, get 4,500 respondents. So that sort of information is just unbelievably dynamic. How many Guinnesses did you drink today? Four, three, two, one. Boom, most people drank four, four, so we know that they can be drinkers. That sort of stuff is simple to do on mobile. And those sort of respondents are very willing to participate because they have nothing else to do. This is what they do on mobile. So we ran a poll and we figured out the match that was the top team and the other three were the other three. And now we've got people in the chat rooms kicking other people out of the chat rooms because they're bad about their team. They've got us, they've got, uh, they've got support <coughs> coming to us saying, this guy bad about Arsenal and this team and this guy's doing that. They are so involved that it's frightening. We're getting 90 pages per visit on the site, and we're getting an average of 35 minutes time on the site. Numbers are ridiculous. It's so easy to succeed in these markets if you know what you're doing. Um, and it doesn't look like that. And this is a mobile website. Um, we can basically do anything that an app can do with the exception of real-time chats. That's the only thing that tech is really struggling with. And ironically, the iPhone is the only phone that we're experiencing the lack of photo uploadability. On the iPhone, you cannot go into your, photo, your phone's memory and upload a photo to the website. It just hasn't happened. However, you can email the photo to us and we'll upload it for you. So there are solutions. So what I'm trying to illustrate here is if you do it right, if you do it smart, and if you do it in the, in the right place with the right people in the right markets, you will not fail. It is virtually impossible to fail. If you had to launch an iPhone app in Nigeria for this thing, you failed. There's no time to go. So this is what's able to be done. Um, this is why mobile first is really important. And I'm actually interested to know if any of you know of a campaign that you've run yourselves has gotten over 250,000 people on desktop with any. And if you do, I'd love to know. But those sort of numbers you don't get anywhere except for mobile. And if this doesn't illustrate that mobile is the presence, then nothing at all. So the sort of features that we have, content integration, custom plugins that we build, theme and logo, they opted for no photos and no blogs because they didn't want to moderate. So that cost went away. They have dynamic news, football results, blogs, chat room. We're building competitions for them, SMS sharing, and Twitter and Facebook integration. If you can believe it, we do have Twitter and Facebook integration on mobile. And the most interesting thing, Twitter, absolutely useless. It is the most irrelevant form of viral marketing on mobile ever. We probably get 60 or 70 tweets a day. Um, what we do is the little tweet button, you hit it and it says, I'm loving Guinness VIP on Motrial, with a link to the site. We've had maybe 100 referrals from 250,000 people. Facebook item, 14,000 likes, and po close to 1,000 referrals a day, and of those, probably 500 join a day. Facebook on mobile is huge. Highly even if you need to make our campaigns. And in a nutshell, 23 minutes in, that's me.
Okay, done? If you have any questions, please ask away. And if you think that I'm going to be my rocker, please tell me why. Um, otherwise, you can catch my information at about me forward slash Nick Harry or Nick at Did you do the credit for the mobile app? No, Vince, Vince does all the design and um, dev work, and Guinness gives us the creative for that in particular. So, working with agency? Yeah, agency, we love working with agencies. <coughs> agencies, so the way we pitch the data platform, we do what you guys can't. And what you can't do is build an effective mobile community. Why? Well, because you don't have technology. We do. So, we let you do the creative and deal with the clients and moderate the content, and we just provide the platform. And you haven't signed a contract with that yet? No, yet. no, not yet. Um, so the numbers, I don't think I actually mentioned, we've got, I did, I think it is, 700,000 people um, globally that are using our products in five months. Um, our biggest markets are India, Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa, and the US. Um, and Africa and the India region is growing at a more fast pace. Yes, we're growing by about 10,000 users a day. Nick, how do you see um, video penetration in Africa on mobile? Video, we're still, we're still a couple of years away from massive video penetration. Um, look, the SPV Mobile is hedging their bets. They think that it's going to be big soon. And there are users who are going to do it. Um, for example, that's if, if it was available, I'd hit YouTube and download the crap out of it and stuff. But it's just not really widely available. The broadband's not fast enough. So the penetration is quite low. Um, I used to be the GM at Zuby, and they've done the right thing now by pushing into mobile. It is the best solution for them and the best solution on mobile that they could have had as a video platform. Um, so I don't know, I'd still say we're about a year, a year and a half, two years away from mobile being prominent. At the grid, we did run a mobile competition um, with, with video. So upload yourself singing a song and you could, it was like a, a mobile idols. Struggled. We maybe got a thousand uploads in 12 months. So people just don't want to spend money. The, the top of mind in mobile in South Africa is money, is air time. The average South African, we, we did some research, and the average South African has up to 60 rand a month to spend on their time. Now, if your site's two main download, that's 10 rand. That's one sixth of their monthly ability to, to browse the web. So those things are really important to remember, and video just kills that. Air yeah, time is huge. Okay. Cool. Anything else? Good. We'll get back to work. <laughs> Thank you for your time.